Welcome to a new vlog. A new day, a new vlog, a new week, and uh, I'm loving it. It's a weird, weird day in the Netherlands. We got some rain, we got no sunshine, but it's going to be 25 degrees Celsius, which is pretty odd in the Netherlands. For today, I got some awesome food that I'm going to be cooking up. I got tri tips, like beautiful tri tips. And I almost bought all of it. But currently, the price of tri tip in the Netherlands is around 13 euros the kilogram which is absolutely insane it's so super cheap i'm loving it so we're going to do two of these since they are only 13 years kilogram <clears throat> and these are around the kilogram they are 1.06 and the other one is 1.22 and i'm going to be cooking some ribs so today is going to be quite the tasty day i just unpacked these beautiful pieces of beef and I just wanted to show you guys, look, look at the intramuscular fat that sits on this dry tip. That is literally insane. It still has a little bit of that vacuum thingy going on, but I'm just gonna let it breathe through the air. So it oxidizes a little bit, looks better on camera as well. But just look at that intramuscular fat. That's really, really good. This is such a beautiful piece of beef. Well, the reason that this is called a tri-tip is because in this piece of meat the fibers run in this direction like this but if you look closely here you can see that the fibers run in this direction so it kind of changes and then in the end it changes once again and the fibers run in this direction so that's why they call it the tri-tip one two three but you can imagine this. Look at that fat cap. How cool is that? For humans, that piece of meat sits right here on the on your like when you move your leg like this. That's the muscle that is called the tri tip. That's that's the muscle that does all the work. For cows that stand all day and walk around like that, that's going to be a big muscle. For us humans, it's just a small muscle. But for the cows. It's pretty big and pretty delicious. But it's a working type of meat. You know, gotta understand if the cow's working, walking around, it's been, well, putting that to action a lot. And um, it also means it's not as tender as, for instance, like um, a beef tenderloin. So this is more of a, um, compared to, it's not like skirt steak, where it's like really rough, thick fibers, but it's like in between that. More of like um, a buffet or a flank stick. Hey, even a little bit more tender than that. Like a picanha. So, uh, but this is really, really good as well for a brisket. Now, um, talking about briskets, these days briskets are becoming really expensive and I've seen some cheaper ones coming onto the market. Uh, those cost around 75 euros for about well, three and a half kilograms, which are really strange, awkward looking briskets. But a full whole pork pack of brisket costs around 250 euros for seven kilograms. That is, that's 35 euros to kilogram. Now, if you take a whole pack of brisket, so that's seven kilograms, of course, 35 euros to kilogram is quite okay a price. The problem with that price though is that you're getting like a big chunk of beef and are you going to use all of it? No, you're not. Nobody can, well, unless you're getting a big crew over that is 200 grams a person is times five times seven is 35. So you kind of need like 35 people or something like that like around 30 to 40 people to eat a whole pack of brisket. With a tri-tip of a kilogram, well, if you are calculating like 200 grams a person, that's gonna be five people eating that whole tri-tip. And that's kind of more reasonable piece. And you can scale it up by buying two of them. It's half the price of a brisket. So in my mind, it really, really makes sense to look towards cheaper cuts that have the spirit of barbecue. You wanna go cheap, you wanna go Focus on the kilogram price, save some money, 
and get some good results. And um, so therefore, brisk is kind of like becoming like a like a, an out there thing that you're not doing anymore other than just a showpiece. That's what it's becoming to me. Let me show you guys what I have in my freezer. It's amazing. It's well, rarity these days, I think, to find good pieces of meat, but it's also very, very expensive. Let me see. There it is. This. <laughs> this. Oh. This is an Australian F1 Wagyu. This thing is freaking amazing. Uh, uh, it is very, very expensive. It's an Australian F1 grain fed. Um, by the Australian agricultural company this thing is a beauty it's a beast if you cook this up it will turn absolutely delicious and amazing can I open this with one hand I'm gonna try oh yeah and I love these things I'm definitely gonna be cooking it I'm gonna be enjoying it I'm gonna turn it into something very very amazing but the downside is it's not for every weekend you can well in these this days and age where you have to pay your fuel you have to pay for a lot of expensive things and i'm not saying that we're not doing well in the world we're doing really great and the economy is running like a train however we're spending more money on less stuff so that's kind of sad so what i want to do is i want to give you guys the option of having options of being able to barbecue every weekend and so I would like to come up with ideas of cooking things that are affordable like like pork ribs like tri-tips um, and like many other things that are really low in price but high in value because they just haven't been discovered yet I do realize that not in every part of the world the prices are the same. So for instance, if you're in the south of the US, a tri-tip might be more expensive. But if you're here in the Netherlands, the tri-tip is very, very cheap. So you gotta figure out which cuts work for you the best. And I can definitely tell you that the more exotic the cuts are in the Netherlands, the more expensive they're gonna be. Well, the tri-tip in the Netherlands is called at Azel Gym and it basically translates to donkey but it's a part of the uh, the groin that's what it is um, and that makes it very very cheap because Dutch butchers don't know they don't know that this is a really well they know it's a really great piece but they don't know that it's so good for barbecue and that means the less popular it is but the higher value you have the better it is What's up with that rooster? It just keeps on making noise. And now, stop talking, it stops making noise. Question. Yeah. Try to. Yeah. What about it? Love it. Tasty. Better than picanha or less than picanha? Uh, well, as you might know, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with picanha. I loved it. And then I had one that was supposed to be dry aged, but, but was like way off. And then I ate that and I got sick for about a few days. So that's like, yeah, enough picanha for me. So tri-tip would be the go-to for me right now. Tri-tip better than picanha. I don't know. Tri-tip better than brisket. Yes. Tri-tip better. Tri-tip yes. better than picanha, tri-tip better than brisket. All right. I want to see what Jim thinks. Yo, Jimbo. Yo. Tri-tip. Tri-tip. Better than picanha? Better than picanha. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, I like the structure more. Yes? Yeah. Okay. It's more, has more of a bite. Yeah. Okay. For me. Tri-tip or brisket? Which is better? Tri-tip. Why? Um, also because I like steaks more. And you can But if you cook it, if you cook a tri-tip like a brisket, which would you then prefer? Then I would go for brisket. Okay. Yeah. So Jim says, yay on the uh, the picanha tri-tip wins yeah. nay on the brisket brisket wins over tri-tip so then we only have one person left but he's just way too busy to talk huh? no yeah. tri-tip 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 over picanha obvious tri-tip tri-tip over brisket 
We're gonna find out today. But I, really what do you think? Like your gut? What does it say? What does it say right there? Ah, try tip. Try tip. Try tip. Try tip. So. What's your verdict? My, I love try tip. I love it because it's cheap. It's only 13 euros <laughs> kilogram, so it's already one. <laughs> well, I think. We should close off the block probably, kill some wasps. Nothing more exciting coming today than what's already going on. But keep in mind, if you order beef, well now you know what to order. Look for price and quality. So if you factor those two, those two in, then you know what you need to get. And then you know what's going to make you happy. Price is important. It makes you happy too. So bye-bye. Bye-bye, man. Bye-bye. Doei-doei. Tot de volgende vlog.